زين من كل مكان الصويرة زينة البلدان زوروا نرجع فرحان بشوت مراي ورابوتاي وذي بمي شنو فاشيم اوديك تشويش شبات شلوم تو all of you and I pray to Hashem to give you all of, to all of you happiness, bracha, v'atzlaha, v'atzlaha. The parasha of this week is the parasha of the, the death of Aaron at Tzadik. When he passed away, all Jews cried for Aaron Akohen. The reason why all the Jewish people cried for Aaron Akohen because Aaron Akohen was a man that all his life was doing shalom between people. You know, Shlomo Amelach said, Tov Shem Eshemel Tov, Yom Abba Abba, Yom Abba Abba, Yom Abba Abba. Shlomo Amelach said that an, a man who has a good name He is like, a, he's, a, he's, the, he's more than anything else in the world. Because it's like you take the oil. When you put the oil on the water, you see always the oil flow up. Always a good name. You know, a lot of people, when they pass away, uh, if they were good, So people talk about him good. And if he was not good, so no one will talk about him and he will be forgotten. That's why always the Tzadikim, because Tzadikim they have a good name. The Tzadikim all their life they were good. They were good with Hashem and they were good with people. So when they pass away, they have, they, they leave it a good name. So people talk good about them. They leave They, they, they live history, a good history. Somebody who did nothing in his life, so when he passed away, he passed away. His family, his, uh, his friends, they will cry for him that way, and that's, and that's it. After, he will be forgotten. But somebody who did, has a good name, that all his life was good to people, and he was doing good things, and you, there, there were things to learn about him, how he come to synagogue, he serve Hashem. So, especially when he, he is among people and he try to, to teach people good things. So, his life, it's good when he was alive and his life will be, remain good even after his death. And uh, Aaron Akohen, his speciality was that all Jews, Right for him, even men and women. Usually, maybe some of them will cry for him, but all, call Israel, all Jews. The Gemara said that when Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, the Torah don't mention that the whole Jews they cried Moshe Rabbeinu. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu was, he was a, a hard man with the Jews. When he has to shout at them, he shout at them. When he has to correct them, he correct them. And uh, you know, he was a uh, he was not easy man, but people love him because he was the the prophet of Hashem. But Aaron Cohen, he was a peacemaker. So that is the real good name, a peacemaker. When there is two people that they, they don't talk, so Aaron Cohen will do everything he can to make peace between them. And Aaron Cohen as well. He has a, a, another big speciality that for Shambayit, between a man or woman, when he hear that there is a couple that he wants to divorce, he will do everything to make Shalom between them. And you know what it is, Shalom? Shalom is something incredible. Unfortunately, my friend, today you can see people that they, they, You see people that, I mean, they will do good things, but not with uh, all their capacity. Aaron Akohen, that's when the Torah mentioned his death. And the Torah mentioned that 
all the Jews cried for him because he, you know, he was a lot of times he was, I mean, usually when there was a revolution between Jews against Moshe and Aaron, they will include Aaron of Moshe. A lot of times, you know, you see in the Torah that the Jewish people, they are complaining and always they complain to Aaron as well. I mean, Aaron, he has no, I mean, usually Aaron Akoin, when you curse him, you will talk about, bad about him, after he will not talk to you. But Aaron was not like that. Even that you curse him, even that you will complain, even if you you spell on him. One day later, if you hear that you have a problem, he will come to help you. So people, they loved him. People loved him. So they cried after his death. That is the parasha of this week. Now, maybe I have to tell you something. Why Aaron did not have the zechut? The married to be buried in Israel. Why he had to die in the desert? What he did? What 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 what, what was what was wrong? Okay, Moshe uh, he, he died in the desert because Hashem told him to talk when the Jews were thirsty and uh, they started to complain. And Hashem said to Moshe, "Talk to the rock." And from the rock we come out water. And Moshe Rabbeinu, instead of talking to the rock, he hit the rock. Okay. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, Allah wa Shalom, he thought it's the same. Talk or hit the rock, it's the same. So he, he, he not had to shall God forbid, he wanted to, to go against the, the word of Hashem. He just, Moshe Rabbeinu, he thought it's the same. And only because he thought it's the same, was punished, as we punished him. I mean, there is a two questions. First, why Moshe Rabbeinu he deserved this? I mean, after all what he did for the Jews, 40 years, he was a, a man who was a good leader to the Jews. When Hashem was angry against the Jews, Moshe Rabbeinu he prayed to Hashem, he prayed to Hashem to forgive them. And he said to Hashem, kill me and don't kill the Jews. Take away my neshama, but not the Jews. Please, Hashem. And Moshe Abinu has a way how to calm down the anger of Hashem. Did he deserve this kind of punishment? I mean, he can't say to Hashem, please, Hashem, forgive me. That's it. No. Moshe Abinu, he prayed 515 prayers that Hashem will forgive him. And let him go to Eric's side. And Hashem said, No way, I will not let you. Why Hashem was so angry against Moshe Rabbeinu? It's like he, he found an excuse. I mean, for nothing. I mean, okay, Hashem said, Talk. Moshe Rabbeinu said, Talk. talk. And he hit the, the rock and, and the, the water came. I mean, he can say to Hashem, Hashem, forgive me. I'm sorry, Hashem. I thought it's the same. No, Hashem would not forgive him. Not only that, even Aaron, he passed away. Why? Aaron, he did nothing. It, it was not Aaron who hit the rock. And Hashem did not say to Aaron to talk to the rock. It's Moshe. So why Aaron? He, he, he had to, to die as well in the desert. My friend, the answer is that Hashem knows how much Aaron he loved Moshe Rabbeinu. And of course, for, Mo, for Aaron, the real leader of the Jews, it's Moshe. For Aaron and Cohen, it's impossible to enter Israel without Moshe Rabbeinu. He preferred to die in the desert with Moshe Rabbeinu and not to, f uh, to show the people that I am better than Moshe, that he was better than, than Moshe. Hashim knows how much Aaron will love his brother. Hashim knows that Aaron will never accept that he will enter Israel and Moshe will die in the desert. That was the law. This is the Shem Tov of Aaron. Aaron Akohen, he had a good name. What was his good name was 
that he loves so much the Jewish people. And even for Aharon Cohen, it was not normal for, for him that he will, uh, he will teach Torah to the Jews and Moshe Rabbeinu is not here. It's impossible. He cannot accept that. For, for Aaron, Moshe, even that Aaron was older than Moshe, but Aaron Cohen, he gave us a teaching how much, uh, how much he respected his brother, even that he was older than him. I mean, usually always the older brother, he want uh, the, that uh, his young brothers will respect him more. Aaron Cohen, he knew that Moshe, he, he, I should choose him. If I should choose him, so for me, it's okay. I accept. It's, I mean, a lot of times today, you see people fighting. Why you are the president? Why? You? It's a shame who choose this man to be the president of that shul. It's a shame who choose that man to, do, to be the rich. It's a shame. I mean, you have to accept. You have to accept the fact. that Aaron was a kind of, that's what he was, as a good name. Aaron, he always accepted. What a shame. The desire of Hashem. The desire of Hashem that Moshe will be the, the, the leader of the Jews, even that he is older than him. So I accept. But I don't accept that Moshe will, be, he will die in the desert and I will enter Israel. So that's why Hashem, he said, Well, to Moshe Abino, you and your brother, you will die in the desert. And with no objection, we did not see Aaron say to Moshe, Moshe, why me? Why, why me? What I did? I mean, he could have that argument, but Aaron, he accepted. Aaron, I, I, I would like to tell you, I think he was even happy that he was going to die before Moshe and to be buried in the desert, and he will not live and enter Israel, and Moshe, his brother, his young brother, will die. For him, Moshe is the teacher, the teacher, so there is no teacher more than him. So, it's Yeshua, the student, who become the leader. But not the Moshe the Aaron the Chanab, not Aaron the Cohen to take the place of Moshe Rabbeinu. So now you understand that why this is the something incredible. This is the good name of Moshe Rabbeinu of Aaron the Cohen. Anyway, and that's why uh, the Gemara said that Bishrut of this root of Aaron, they were the desert Anani Kavod. And that is the, the seven cloud that they protected the Jews in the desert from the hot weather, from the cold weather. It was with his foot. Aaron Akohen, it was big. You know what it is a cloud? A cloud, it covers. When there is a blue sky, you see the sun. But when you see a cloud, you don't see the blue sky, you don't see the sun. And that was the 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 the, the sun, that was Aaron a coin symbolized. The symbol of Aaron was when there is fight between two people and there is cloud between them, Aaron would spread that cloud to make things clear between two people. That was Aaron a coin. Because always people they fight. Always this fight here, this fight between two friends, between a man and his, his, uh, his wife, between the. Uh, and Aaron Akon was here to take the cloud out, out and to bring back light, blue sky, good mind, you know, clarity to people, between people. That was the. When Aaron Akon passed away, every Jew was talking about the good things that Aaron Akoin did. Now, why Moshe Abir was punished? For this he was punished. Well, my friend, the Torah wants to give you something incredible. Every, every time we, people think, well, Moshe is a man, a man with no, a man, a perfect man, of course. He was the most humble man in the world. He was the bigger prophet in the world. It was the biggest setting. It was up to now, he's the teacher, Moshe Rabbeinu. Up to now, we talk all about Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe, Moshe, Moshe. But, I want to teach you that 
אמן איז אמן. אין בה, אין צדיק בארץ אשר עצי טוב ולא יחידה. There is no man in the world that he will not do even a small sin, something, because this, we live in a world of Yitzhara, we live in a world of anger, we live in a world that, uh, according to the Ramban, what was the sin of Moshe Rabbeinu? Because he said, Shimona Hamorim, because when the Jews, they were thirsty, and Moshe Rabbeinu, he said he cursed them. He said, you, you are not good people. Shimona Amorim, listen to me, you bad people. And Hashem said to Moshe, you talk like that to my children? Because of this, he was punished. But I want to teach you that a man is a man. And Hashem never forgive. Hashem is honest. Hashem is true. If Hashem he wants to punish somebody, even if he, he, if he is like Moshe Rabbeinu, he will punish him. It's something to remember. That how much we have to respect each other. We have to reach... To, because Moshe Rabbeinu, a lot of, a lot of times we talk bad language about this one, we talk Lashonara, we don't give enough kavod to this one, da 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 da. And Hashem wants to teach you something incredible. And my friend, this Dvar uh, Torah, I see this Dvar Torah in the memory of my friend, Dr. Albert Livkovich, this, he, which he passed away a few weeks ago. He was a good man. He, he's from New York. How much, every time I needed him, he was a big doctor, always he helped me. He was a good man. What I liked about him, that he, he, he was very respectful man. He believed so much in Hashem. I mean, if you see him, you may think he's not, he's not religious, but he was a big, 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 big. He has a big faith in Hashem, with his wife and his family. I mean, sometimes you look at a person but you don't see his heart. And this man was so perfect, so good. So, so uh, I would like to tell you something, that all his own problems, he never, always he showed only the positive things. When he has a problem, he never said to his wife, I have a problem. Always he keeps his problem and he prayed to Hashem. And uh, he passed away suddenly. He was very, very ill. So my respect for his wife and for his son and daughter, I should give them, all of them, consolation and God bless them. So my friend, for me, this man, Albert, Dr. Albert Lefkowitz, he had a, a good name, a very, very, you know, up to now, I have some medicine that he gave me. I use them from time to time. And now that he passed away, Really, uh, those medicine that he gave me last year, I keep them as, as a souvenir. So I will not forget him this year. And uh, uh, please God, may he soon rest in peace. My friend, I would like to wish to all of you happiness. And I would like just to finish with this. Never forget to do only good things. This is Shem Tov. A man will not take with him no money, nothing. You know what he will take with me? If he did a good thing in his life. As, as long as he has good name in this world, up there, they will give him reward, they will give him satisfaction, they will give him a good place in Ganaiden. Tov Shem Beshem and Tov. A man who has a good name, is better, is more better than this oil that when you put in the water, the oil flow up, up, always the oil. So a good name always flow, not only in the life of the person, especially after his death. I wish to all of you, Barakha, Amen,